Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, January 27th, and from changes coming tomorrow to Ohio's statewide curfew to what's ahead for Jeep Fest this year, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's get a check on our weather. I'm gonna pass it off to our first alert weather team. Tomorrow morning, another brisk one. You'll want several layers with temperatures dipping down in the teens, and it'll feel even colder than that thanks to the breeze maybe even the upper single digits for wind chills. Tomorrow afternoon, temperatures hovering in the mid 20s, not really gonna get too much warmer tomorrow. So the next couple days are gonna be rather chilly. You will see some warmer weather in that 10 day forecast, but I do wanna give you a look at what's to come for the next couple days. The cold weather continues on Thursday, kind of another partly sunny day. Looking towards Friday and the start of the weekend, Yes, still going to be cold on Friday and our attention turns to Saturday. This is our next chance for a weather maker that could bring us some rain, some snow, kind of a mixed bag of that wintry precipitation, very much like our last one did. Now, as you know, the storm trajectory fluctuates based on what the latest data tells us, but right now we're seeing indications that we could see a little period of snow as well as the chance for some rain. Let's look at that timing Saturday night into Sunday morning could be a bit of a wintry mix to kick off your Sunday. Of course, this system could fluctuate north. It could move south. It is still hundreds of miles away and we'll keep a close eye on it every step of the way. But right now we are watching the chance for a bit of wintry mix to greet you as you're headed out the door Sunday morning. You can see that mixed chance, especially on Sunday, looking likely for the weekend. Temperatures do warm up into the mid thirties, so that might help melt away what accumulations we do get next week. Temperatures showing signs of a warm up. If you're not a fan of the twenties, we're going to be up in the thirties, if not the low forties towards the end of that 10 day forecast, seeing a few signs that point towards early spring, but also winter not quite ready to let go. And start your engines, Jeepers. Jeep Fest is back this year, and it is set for the weekend of August 6th. Like most of our favorite activities, the event took a year off in 2020 due to, of course, the coronavirus pandemic. But event organizers say this year they're optimistic that an 80th celebration can be done safely late this summer, with the majority of Jeep Fest activity happening outdoors. The All Jeep Parade will take place on Saturday, August 7th, and registration is now open to the public, and the first 300 to register will have the chance to win a set of tires from BF Goodrich. Early registrations include a free Toledo Jeep Fest participant t-shirt and are priced at $55 per Jeep from now until July 6th or until spots are sold out. Registration for the parade will close on Sunday, August 1st at 11.55 p.m. And I have a link to all the information you need to get registered in the description of this video. And yesterday was a big day in Swanton. Roughly 300 airmen with the Air National Guard's 180th Fighter Wing reunited with their families. They were deployed in Afghanistan, some for a few months, but others for much longer. Now this deployment was scheduled well in advance, but the National Guard has had a lot on its plate this year, and that's putting it lightly. So we knew it was gonna be busy. What we didn't expect is the pandemic hit on top of it, uh, and that, that tasked the system, but as always, our airmen rose to the occasion and, uh, and made it happen. But now the airmen are back on U.S. soil and are finally home. And today marks a monumental day in world history, as it's been 76 years since the liberation of Auschwitz. Across Europe, the victims were remembered and honored in a number of ways. In Austria and Slovakia, hundreds of survivors were offered their first doses of the coronavirus vaccine, a gesture that's both symbolic and truly life-saving, given the threat of the virus to older adults. And Luxembourg signed a deal agreeing to pay reparations and to restitute dormant bank accounts, insurance policies, and looted art to Holocaust survivors. But during the pandemic, many Holocaust survivors find themselves in a state of previously unimaginable isolation. Although some have found new connections over Zoom, World Jewish Congress leader Ronald Lauder has organized video meetings for survivors and their children and grandchildren during the pandemic. And to commemorate and reflect on the day safe at home, institutions like the Auschwitz Memorial Museum in Poland, Yad Vashem in Israel, and the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in D.C. have online events planned. In all, about 6 million European Jews and millions of other people were killed by the German Nazis and their collaborators. In 2005, the United Nations designated today, January 27th, as International Holocaust Remembrance Day. And today, the Biden administration held its first official COVID-19 press briefing. The president's team has promised to be more open about their pandemic response and say they plan to hold three of these briefings each week. The briefings are part of Biden's attempt to rebuild public confidence in institutions, namely the federal government, with a commitment to share the bad news along with the good. Despite the best, our best intentions, we're going to face setbacks, which I will always explain to you and acknowledge 
And let me be clear, things are going to continue to get worse before they get better. The death toll, experts tell us, is likely to top 500,000 by the end of next month, this um, fe February. And cases will continue to mount. We didn't get into this mess overnight. And it's going to take months for us to turn things around. But let me be equally clear. We're going to get through this. We will defeat this pandemic. And to a nation waiting for action, let me be clearest on this point. Help is on the way. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, the new head of the CDC, said her agency's latest forecast indicates the U.S. will reach between 479,000 and 514,000 deaths by February 20th. At this point, more than 425,000 Americans have already died in the pandemic. The stakes for Biden, whose presidency hinges on his handling of the pandemic and the largest vaccination campaign in global history, could hardly be any higher. The president is pushing Americans who are already fatigued to recommit to social distancing measures and mask wearing, pointing to scientific models that suggest the practices could save 50,000 lives over the coming months. And he is insistent that members of his administration model best behaviors for the country. And some doctors are recommending we double up our efforts on stopping the spread of COVID-19, specifically when it comes to our masks. It is scientifically proven that masks help minimize the spread of viruses, including COVID-19. And while data about this whole two masks approach is still being looked at, doctors are encouraging it to further eliminate the spread of the virus. And the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, has signed onto the idea saying, it only makes sense that adding a second layer would make masks more effective. In fact, researchers at Virginia Tech say that wearing two cloth masks will increase the efficacy from 50% to 75%. And the Office of Ohio Governor Mike DeWine confirmed today that starting Thursday, which is tomorrow, Ohio's statewide curfew will be pushed back to start at 11 p.m. for a period of at least two weeks. This comes after the state's seventh straight day with the number of COVID-19 hospital patients below 3,500. Now moving forward, here's the plan. If the state drops below 3,000 for seven straight days, the curfew will be pushed to midnight. And if the number of patients drops below 2,500 for seven straight days, the curfew will be dropped. However, it very well could be reinstituted if the number of COVID-19 patients in our hospitals rise again. And before I go, today is National Chocolate Cake Day. And did I try and fail to bake a chocolate bundt cake? Yes, I did. But will I still be eating this bundt cake? Yes, because it's what's on the inside that counts and what's inside here is chocolate. So, that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.